Very busy week in Madison. Debates flaring up over abortion access, redistricting, and the Wisconsin Election Commission. CBS 58's Emily Fan and Wisp Politics editor J.L. Ross discuss in tonight's Capital Connection. This week, as expected, the state Senate voted to fire the state's chief election officer. That's Megan Wolf, who is serving as the administrator of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. And within just hours after the Senate taking action on Thursday, Attorney General Josh Call filed a lawsuit. He called it a blatant disregard of state law, as he has said over the past few weeks that lawmakers had no authority to hold the vote in the first place. Now, I think the question going forward is, how quickly will this lawsuit make its way through the court system? Attorney General Josh Call said that he believes it will go through rather quickly um, because election issues are usually taken up a little bit uh, more in a timely manner, I guess mm -hmm. you can say. But this still doesn't really ease a lot of people's concerns who believe that the vote to fire her does, in, in a sense, create uncertainty heading into the 2024 election cycle. So quickly is a relative term in court parlance. Yes. So. If they can get it done within a year, that would probably be okay. But then, what if it is fin finished next fall? What if there is a change of who's the election administrator in August or September of 2024, right before an election? That adds more pressure to the situation. Remember, the state Supreme Court, with a 4-3 conservative majority, has set a standard of when there's a vacancy in a appointed position and how long somebody can stay in that position if they wanted to. The court's changed now to a different majority, a liberal majority. Will that liberal majority now embrace that precedent or will it go back to what the minority ruled in that case? And oh, by the way, Josh Call, who lost that case a year ago, is now going to argue, we assume, mm -hmm. that was right. I was wrong a year ago, but now you guys are right. And it's important to note that Wolf and Call are pretty adamant that she can stay in the role. And Wolf even said she's not going to go anywhere unless the court tells her otherwise. Now, the other big story uh, this week in politics was that Planned Parenthood said they are going to resume abortion services here in Wisconsin at their Madison and Milwaukee clinic starting on Monday. And that is due to how they interpret a Dane County judge ruling that landed on Thursday that they believe that they can resume services despite this ruling. But here in the Capitol, lawmakers are still split on whether the move is lawful for Planned Parenthood to go ahead and do this. So in July, Dane County Judge said she's rejecting an effort to dismiss the, call, the lawsuit Josh Call filed challenging the 1849 law. She made clear where she's headed, that she does not believe the law applies to abortion, and there's no ban on consensual abortions in Wisconsin right now. However, that isn't a final decision on the merits of the case. And oh, by the way, if the case goes and calls favor, Joel Armansky, the Boyden County DA, can appeal. He could go to a conservative appeals court. It could overturn that ruling. There is some legal question about where Planned Parenthood is if that happens. However, one, we know the state Supreme Court likely is the last place it's going to go. We assume liberal majority, it will overturn that law. But, you know, it happens when you assume things. But two, Planned Parenthood is going to Milwaukee, Madison for a reason. The uh, DAs in Dane County Dean Daniel said he will not prosecute anybody over the 1849 law. And in Milwaukee County, Chisholm has said, hinted he wouldn't. So they don't have to worry about there being an issue if they begin providing abortions again, if that law were somehow come back in effect. And also on Thursday, the Assembly passed legislation that would overhaul how the state draws its legislative boundaries, also known as redistricting. Now, this comes after Assembly Speaker Robin Voss proposed the legislation on Tuesday, and he basically sold it as this is an off ramp to talking about impeaching the state Supreme Court Justice Janet Protasiewicz because we know that issue is likely going to be before the state's high court very soon. There's been these calls for her to recuse herself. It seemed like Voss was softening his stance on the issue. And then just the next day, he said, well, you know, even though Democrats criticized the plan and they voted against it besides one in the assembly, he went ahead and launched his own proposal that would allow former state Supreme Court justices to investigate the scope of what impeachment would look like here in Wisconsin. So he's still kind of toying with the issue. But back to redistricting, JR, you know, explain this to our viewers of what this really even means for them when it comes to what a new map could even look like. A map could change who your lawmaker is. They could change the power balance in the Capitol and basically rearrange everything. Think about it right now. In the Capitol, when there is a fight between Governor Evers and the legislature, it's both houses getting up on Tony Evers, right? If one chamber were to flip, which would be possible in a new map, um, you could have a different dynamic. You could talk about Medicaid expansion. There'd be more leverage for Democrats to push an issue like that. Now, 
looking at these maps, big picture, you can't draw a 50-50 assembly map because of the way Democrats are concentrated. Um, you could, though, do a 50-50 Senate map. Not a guaranteed map that Democrats would win the majority, but in the right environment, they would have a shot. Democrats have pushed this Iowa-style redistricting for years. They are now all of a sudden cautious. Why? Because they see a liberal Supreme Court majority saying that's our best hope. They get a map that's better for us on the numbers. If you have a nonpartisan commission drawing a map based off geography, different um, dynamics, you probably get a map that's still pretty favorable to Republicans. So they're thinking this is our best bet. For Republicans, they have found religion about redistricting with this Iowa-style nonpartisan process. They also need something, an out, because they look at what's going on and go, this is not good for us. We are seeing numbers that show us that voters aren't happy with this effort. Talk about impeaching Potosiewicz. Um, there's $4 million being spent, we have heard, against them. There's a pressure campaign right now. They need a way out. All right, that will do it for this week. Thanks for joining us.